I have tomato blight. There, I said it. Notice it's not a big drama. Okay, it's a bit annoying. Um, it has got to the point where it's affecting fruit and it is late blight, so I am basically going to strip my tomatoes now. But it's not the end of the world. I've had a really decent harvest up until now and I'm not binning anything that's not gone rotten. It'll just be used in ways that I hadn't exactly planned. Don't panic, it's not the end of the world. It's just the end for me for right now with the tomatoes. That's all, so let's go. So blight then, let me put it to you like this. Blight's just a word that means something that can wipe out your crops. So you know, you get blights of insects, famous one being Egypt and locust. So blight that we're talking about, tomato blight, potato blight, those types of things. Basically then, it's something that will affect the leaves and the stem and the fruit. It makes your leaves and your stem go all brown or black and die and shrivel up. You'll get big black splotches on the fruit. So the story of blight in our garden then. Blight's caused by a fungus-like organism, so it behaves like a fungus. And basically, it is carried in the wind, lands on things, and then it can spread between your plants. Now, I first saw it on my sweet millions and I noticed then that I had big brown and black patches on stems and some of the leaves had completely shriveled away and died. I've got blight. You can see the stems gone black, big patches of black. You can see it on this bit and down this branch. I'm trying not to touch it because it will spread so easily. So, a lot of pruning. Anything that was in the slightest bit dark brown, shriveled the works, I pruned off of the plants. Because at that point, it wasn't affecting any of the actual tomatoes. It seemed to do the job. No more problems after that. But I kept an eye every single day. Last couple of weeks, however, I have noticed more of it appearing on different plants. And then yesterday, black cream tomato that's the sad bit because as you guys know I really made an effort to get these big tomatoes to ripen because you know we're almost at the end of our season and they've been doing great unfortunately it's one of those ripe ones that's got the big splodges on it so of course then I started checking everything <laughs> it's on the green stock now as well because of course it travels in the wind now here's the thing don't panic, right? It happens. We live somewhere where it is pretty much all of our grown season is in the right temperature and humidity for either early or late blight. So, you know, there's a chance it's going to happen. It doesn't mean it's definitely going to happen. And as far as I know, the folk around here haven't had an issue. We have a, a stately home type garden a couple of miles up the road and they had it. And I suspect that's just what's blown over in the wind. Hey, it could happen. Right, so what are we doing then? Well, here's the thing. I'm just going to deal with the situation as it presents. And that means Kate and I are going to take all of the tomatoes off the plants. Any that even look like they're affected are going to be discarded. And then I'm going to separate out ripe tomatoes and not ripe tomatoes. And basically just get them used and harvest as much as I can. Then... The plants are going to get cut down, pulled out. Once everything's cut down and pulled out the soil, I'm just discarding it. Off it goes. Not taking any more risks. For those of you asking, nope, I'm not going to put it in the compost. Even though I have a hot composter, it's not always hot and I just don't want to risk it, basically. So that's that. So um, I'm going to need some buckets, some secateurs, and we've actually got loads of tomatoes. So uh, I'm going to need a couple of bowls big enough to put all of these in. Is that a big enough bowl? That might just do it. I've got a slightly smaller one. I'm not joking, but actually <laughs> this might be good. Now, we were saying this morning about the breaking point. So if it has started to ripen, put it in the right one. Okay, so... So if you've got a whole truss like this and the top ones are ripe and the bottom ones aren't, yeah, so actual individual tomatoes we're going with. 
Right, so these ones at the bottom are green, the ones at the top are not. Yeah. So you'll get some, like this, that are starting to change colour. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, when you can definitely go, oh, that's changing colour, that's breaking point, right. they will ripen in the house. Okay. I hope you guys can see this quite well. So, obviously it's dead. But what's happened, as you can see, is it's travelled up the stem. And you can see where there's different blackening on the stem at different points, getting to the leaves. And it's basically just all frazzled now. Perfect, beautiful, doesn't have cat face. The most perfect of all of my black trim. Is that one okay? Yeah, it's cat face. Okay. I'm going to need a bigger bow. wire will have to be clean so don't pocket it. Yeah, I haven't been touching the wire. All these things I normally put in my pocket. Labels and wire ah. and string. Um, I might need to get you some more bowls. Yeah. So, um, that's the bed done, but of course, the green stock as well, we're seeing it on the green stock too, which makes sense. So it's time to strip down the tomatoes here too. We definitely need bigger bowls. I just think this might be the easiest way to do it. So these bigger ones, these bits, that's, that's just, just cat the, face, that's yeah, just, that's fine. Why do they call it cat face? Just I have like no cat. idea. Something's had a peck at that one as well, isn't it? Luckily, it's outdoors. The greenhouse doesn't seem to be affected. As soon as I saw the very first potential signs out here, I stopped opening the door to the greenhouse. There are still automatic vents that open the windows and I need that for ventilation, but it's just about trying to reduce where you can. Fingers crossed the greenhouse will keep going for a good bit longer, but it's not bad, is it? For never having done outdoor tomatoes before and not thinking we would get any Anything. tomatoes at all, We've had quite a few bowlfuls that we've already used. Oh, that's the thing. I and try, all and, that. try and just picture in your mind then a picture so we can make people understand. How much do you think we've already eaten and harvested from the outdoor tomatoes? A fairly large percentage of a bowl that size. Because we've had from the outdoors loads and loads of the 
sun go. Yeah, we've had, we've probably had like you're saying most of that bull's worth have been the cherry tomatoes from here, but I reckon we've easily had six to eight creme. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if I hadn't done this at all, that would be my harvest from greenhouse, which would be a good year. Yeah. Well, well, okay, not with the creme because marmand and stuff in the greenhouse do well. But yeah, generally though, we've had, a, it's only the beginning of September, and we've had a brilliant tomato harvest already. Yeah. We're about to take all of this in and the greenhouse is still going. So it seems, oh no blight, oh, oh, but because we've had so many plants and what have you, it's actually not that bad. No, right. and we can do something with all these yeah. tomatoes. So these we'll eat, these we will make chutney and stuff with. Here is the key, even though these tomatoes are not showing signs of blight, there is every chance there will still be blight present. And as if we put all these in a window ledge or whatever and want to ripen them, there's a good chance that the blight will start to show before the ripen. Whereas if we do stuff with them now, cook them now, then we can use them because they're fine. Yeah. So fried green tomatoes, how about movie night? Fried green tomatoes with and the fried green tomato. fried green tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe. It's my favourite movie. So how about I do that for you? Chutney? Yep. Relish? Some of the guys were asking for the recipe for the, the chutney and relish, so we'll yeah. maybe do that. Um, just um, sauces. T pasta. Sauces, tomato tarts. Job's a good one. The thing is, look what's still indoors that we haven't used yet. So there we go. No more outdoor tomatoes. Still got tomatoes to the greenhouse, it's fine. Got heaps from them. I'm happy. All of those bowls you saw, that's more tomatoes than I thought I would get from outdoor tomato growing. So I'm really, really happy. The fact that I had all those outdoor tomatoes has meant that I've got even more tomatoes than I would normally get from the greenhouse. So I'm happy. It's a win-win. This was all about me learning about can I grow tomatoes outdoors here in my garden? And I can. And through that journey, I've learned how to choose the varieties to grow because it makes a difference. I've learned all about how to support them in the bed outside and what the different supports do. I've learned that the tomato plants actually grow differently outdoors in a bed than they do in pots in my greenhouse and how cool it looks. I've got so many positives from this experience. So yeah, it's a wee blip. It's a bit, boo, we got blight, but you know what? It was worth it. If you want to see the whole tomato growing journey, this one's a playlist from start to finish with Scott and I of everything we've done on this journey. And this little video is the handy one where I tell you how to choose your tomato varieties based on your season. See you folks.